In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, again this day, the day in which our Lord died, and rested in, the de in death in the kingdom of the dead, we have gathered to hear the story of his selfless and life-giving sacrifice upon the cross. Let us mark, therefore, the events and words of this day, which proclaim God's victory and our salvation. Solemnly, may we pass before his cross and contemplate his act of love and mercy, forgiveness and grace. We will glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom, in whom is our salvation, our life, and our, life and our resurrection. resurrection. Lord, Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given up into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, grant us your strength and wisdom that we may seek to follow your will in all things. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, help, help us, us walk in your steps. Thank you. 
by Judas is arrested. Then we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Then, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over him to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. Lord, grant us the courage of our convictions, that our lives may faithfully reflect the good news you bring. Amen. Amen. Lord Amen. Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Jesus is condemned by the Sanhedrin. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy, holy cross, cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. When the day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. They said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Lord, grant us your sense of righteousness, that we may never cease to work to bring about the justice of the kingdom that you promised. Amen. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Jesus is denied by Peter. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus, the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely, you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately, a cock crowed. Then Peter, remember the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. Lord, grant us the gift of honesty, that we may not fear to speak the truth even when difficult. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus, help, help us walk in your steps. Lord, grant us discernment that we may see as you see, not as the world sees. Amen. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps.
and crowned with thorns. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your By holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Lord, grant us patience in times of suffering that we may offer our lives as a sacrifice of praise. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, help us, us walk in your steps. Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. Lord, grant us strength of purpose that we may faithfully bear our crosses each day. Amen. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. into service a passerby, Simon, 
a Cyrenian, who is coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Lord, grant us willing spirits that we may be your instruments on earth. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Lord, grant us gentle spirits, that we may comfort those who mourn. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, help us walk in your steps.
Lord, grant us merciful hearts that we may bring your reconciliation and forgiveness to all. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus help, help us walk in your steps. Lord, grant us perseverance that we may never stop seeking you. Amen. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. disciple there whom he loved he said to his mother woman behold your son then he said to the disciple behold your mother and from that hour the disciple took her into his home Lord, grant us constancy, that we may be willing to stand by those in need. Amen. Amen. Lord Amen. Jesus, help us walk in your steps.
dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Lord, grant us trust in you that when our time on earth is ended, our spirits may come to you without delay. Amen. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. Grant us your compassion, that we may always provide for those in need. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus help, help us walk in your steps. steps. As our lives change and the demands of family, friends, and economics change with them, we often naturally and almost unknowingly let go of old dreams so that they can make room for new ones. With little awareness, we shift from one dream to another. That's what's supposed to happen. But then there are the tragic moments when we are abruptly forced to abandon our dreams. With shock and bewilderment, we wonder, how could this have happened? 
On that Good Friday afternoon nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus' disciples watched from a distance as their dreams tragically ended with their master's death on the cross. Jesus' disciples didn't see this coming, even though their master had warned them three times of what would come to pass. They refused to believe that it was past possible. After all, all, only a few days earlier, their master had entered into the city of Jerusalem triumphantly. The crowd swelled around them as their voices cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Of course, in hindsight, they could have seen the signs. They watched as Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem and how his anger grew at the exploitation of the poor, yet they urged him as he overturned the tables of the money changers in the temple. They sensed his anguish in the Garden of Gethsemane, and they were stunned at the mockery of a trial, but they simply couldn't imagine that Jesus, their master, would be crucified between two criminals. No, this was not the dream that Jesus had instilled in their lives. They felt crushed and defeated. Death, you see, has a way of breaking the momentum of the most confident and hopeful dreamers. Yes, even the confident of Jesus' most faithful followers. Perhaps that is how you are feeling this Holy Week. Your life seems to have been set on hold. The coronavirus has made it its mark upon you. If good dreams carry a powerful force of direction and focus in our lives, you have discovered that shattered dreams have a way of leaving you feeling empty, alone, and isolated. The old dreams and hopes no longer have that power to carry you through the day, much less to lead you to a new tomorrow. Perhaps in jest you state that your dreams haven't really disappeared, but they have been temporarily postponed, or that your dreams have been interrupted by things you didn't expect to happen, all unseen circumstances. Perhaps it wasn't the coronavirus per se. You didn't plan on losing your job, nor did you see an approaching downsizing. You didn't plan on having cancer or watching your loved one die so early. Sometimes it seems that God himself is that unseen intruder in our dreams. And so now you are burdened by an unexpected crisis of faith as well. Yes, I know that for every one of us, this Good Friday, there has been at least one dream that has been shattered and disappeared. Throughout Scripture, we are reminded that in the midst of our anxious wanderings, God has promised to lead us to a blessed future that is filled with hope. Unfortunately, we have to march through the parched lands to get there, and that is not easy. You and I have been trained to measure our lives by the signposts we pass along the way, graduation, the first job, marriage, a house, a family, perhaps another degree, a better job, a larger house, grandchildren, and retirement. In these ways, we believe we are on track. But once life hits those parched lands, when dreams are torn, from your grasp and there are no longer any markers, you wonder how you can keep going. You may not feel that you are making any progress physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Spiritually, no, no day seems better or worse than the day before it. The days just feel empty. Yes, this Holy Week, you know personally of the disciples' sorrow and shattered dreams. As one pastoral colleague said, it is hard to cling to the promised hope of Easter when you're trudging through your own personal Good Friday. 
My friends, let me assure you that new life will come again. There is a springtime of the soul waiting. It is born out of death. It is born out of letting go of dreams. Jesus said this as he prepared his own disciples for his crucifixion and death. Very truly, I tell you, he said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That is the promise of the cross that even for just Jesus' disciples, it seemed too difficult to grasp. The cross of Christ, you see, is planted in our human history as an eternal signpost of God's steadfast love for you. No matter what you do, no matter how far you wander, nor how long you dwell in life's parched lands, your loving God will not leave you. It may surprise you, but the story of Jesus' death on the cross is not a tale of persistence through tra tragedy, nor is the story encouraging you to hold on to your fleeting dreams. Jesus' death was the act. It was an act of obedience and surrender an embodiment of his teaching that the way to life was to lose it, to surrender to the purposes of his heavenly Father. Instead of seeking to preserve his own life for his own sake, Jesus gave it up for a greater purpose. This act in death was the only source of light in an otherwise dark Good Friday. And for that reason, the cross remains today as an ever-present strength, an ever-present sign of hope. In his biography, Faith of My Fathers, the late Senator John McCain wrote of an encounter with the Vietnamese guard during his imprisonment in the Vietnam War. He wrote, on Christmas Day, we were always treated to a better than usual dinner. We were also allowed to stand outside our cells for five minutes to exercise or to just look at the trees in the sky. One Christmas, a few months after the gun guard had inexplicably come to my assistance during my long night in the interrogation room, I was standing in the dirt courtyard when I saw him approach me. He walked up, stood silently next to me. Again, he didn't smile or look at me. He just stared at the ground in front of us. After a few moments had passed, he rather nonchalantly used his sandaled foot to draw a cross in the dirt. We both stood wordlessly looking at that cross until after a minute or two he rubbed it up and walked away. I saw my good Samaritan often after that Christmas when we venerated the cross together but he never said a word to me nor gave the slightest signal that he acknowledged my humanity. The cross, my friends, is our reminder that God alone brings life from death. You may despair at the thought of letting go of your shattered dreams. You may have become so numb to the pain and so hopeless to your heart struggling to make a fleeting dream real or perfect again that you don't know how to move forward. Indeed, it may be too painful for you to cry out, it is finished for you fear that you will never see the warmth of the summer sun again. But do not be afraid. Be of good courage. This too is a part of the Creator's plan. Even now he is clearing away the old in preparation for the new, for it is only as these sights and sounds die in life's parched land that they can be born anew and truly bear much fruit. 
That, my friends, is God's promise from the cross. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. For my church, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of slavery into freedom and delivered you through the waters of rebirth. But you have prepared a cross for your
Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, your passion and death is a sacrifice that unites earth and heaven and reconciles all people to you. May we who have faithfully reflected on these mysteries follow in your steps, and so come to share your glory in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. 